Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU. And in today's video, we're going to be highlighting and explaining a brand new iOS 10.1 and 10.1.1 jailbreak demonstration. Again, as stated in the title of this video. Now be sure to give it a huge thumbs up and share it around with your friends if they're at all interested in jailbreaking and to perpetuate the info outlined in this explanatory video, because it's all very important, especially when contemplating the possibility of a new jailbreak being released from this demo, because I'm here to tell you guys, there is not going to be a new jailbreak as a direct consequence of what we're highlighting today. However, that doesn't mean that it's all entirely useless provided it is legitimate, something good still could come of it. So be sure to stick around to the end of this video when I discuss that. Now there is a high probability that this could be fake specifically because it hasn't been confirmed, but I'm just going to operate under the assumption that it's not, and we're going to walk through this jailbreak demo. However, I am going to highlight several times throughout this video that again, this has not been confirmed, and we don't know whether he was actually able to achieve a legitimate jailbreak or not. But he could easily be trolling, so again guys, don't get your hopes up at all. All right, so let's go ahead and launch up Safari because while some of you have sent me this, a good portion of you will not know what I'm talking about. Essentially, this individual released a jailbreak demonstration on iOS 10.1, claiming that it also works on 10.1.1, which definitely makes sense considering 10.1.1 features the exact same security changes as iOS 10.1 and doesn't patch any known vulnerabilities or bugs, at least not from a security standpoint. Now, I don't really want you to give this guy too much attention just because we're still not certain whether it is legitimate or not. And honestly, it doesn't even really matter because he states that he's not going to release anything directly at least, which again, we will talk about more toward the end of this video. So we're not really going to be focused on whether he is official or legitimate or not, but he is a developer and he does have past experience developing Cydia tweaks, which of course doesn't directly translate to being able to create a jailbreak utility since it's so complex, intricate, and takes hundreds of hours of work, but we're just going to get into what's actually going on in this video right here, this demonstration. Remember, I'm not claiming that it is official, and there's really no way to tell 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt, because anything could still be faked. I mean, I've told you guys this before, unless we actually receive a new jailbreak, then always assume a skeptical standpoint. Remember, do not trust anything until it's officially released, and this guy already claims that he's not going to release it. We're going to talk about that shortly, but for now, let's just get into the video itself. All right, so he starts off the video by essentially confirming that he is running an iPhone 7 on iOS 10.1 using Stefan Esser's security app. From there, he actually goes into another third-party app to again just corroborate that his model number is iPhone 9, 3 or the iPhone 7. And then next, he launches the Messages app and confirms that he is in fact on iOS 10 and that he does have digital touch, as well as other features, including sticker packs from the App Store for Messages. And then he launches up Settings and goes to the Home button portion of Settings to confirm that it is in fact an iPhone 7 and he does have the ability to modify the level of click that the Home button actually emulates of course using its Taptic Engine, exclusive to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. He then launches up Settings General About and confirms that it does state that the version or firmware is iOS 10.1. Next, after going to the home screen, he tries to launch up Cydia. It crashes, of course, meaning that the kernel needs to be patched, so he launches up the application that's next to it. Now this is where things start to get interesting, because this is definitely familiar. We've kind of seen something like this before, most recently with the iOS 9.3.x jailbreak from Pangu. It looks like what's going on here is he's essentially kicking off the jailbreak chain of exploits by launching up a side-loaded application to again bypass the initial unsigned code exploit that is required, and then again kicking off that chain of exploits with the sandbox escape. But again, the application is just a blank or a black container featuring the text jailbreak NAW question mark, and he taps that receives this alert that just says jailbreak failed, and then continually taps it, gets the alert again, and he goes through that process a couple of times until it finally says jailbreak done. Again, this is all still suspect. And then he launches up Cydia. It actually loads this time. From there, he receives a message, pulls down quick reply, just like it functions in iOS 10, of course, and then goes over to installing a package inside of Cydia, resprings, and then reopens Cydia and confirms that 
that it is listed in the installed packages section. So that's pretty much the video in its entirety. I just wanted to walk you guys through it, of course, instead of playing it. So that way I could kind of explain things and what's going on. Again, there is a lot of proof here and it is very well put together if it is a hoax. But here's really why it doesn't matter. He says in the description of his video, quote, the major reasons for this not being published are one, Cydia Substrate is patched by replacing a library that loads the tweaks into the system. If we would have an unpatched substrate for 10.x, then maybe would consider twice about this. But as long as it's patched and I don't own it, there will be no releases. Two, as a single developer, I don't want to be responsible for other people's devices. If they break or lose something, I neither don't have the time to help people having problems with the jailbreak process itself. Three, also this jailbreak is stable sometimes and sometimes not. That means it's mostly used for testing tweaks for private use and is not ready to be released at all. Okay guys, so the main takeaway here comes at point number three. If this thing even is official to begin with, then this thing isn't really stable at all. And as for his second point, that definitely makes sense. I mean, considering he is a single developer, he doesn't want to be held accountable for anything that could come of other people's devices if they were to actually jailbreak using a utility that he were to create. Because I mean, if he's only testing this on one device, his iPhone 7, chances are good that so many people will encounter issues. Guys, it takes jailbreak developers weeks of testing on a countless number of devices to actually get things to a release standpoint. And even then, sometimes they encounter complications and everyone's devices, situations, and their environments are different altogether. So that could prompt new concerns and issues. He simply cannot test and debug absolutely everything. So that's a legit point. I'll definitely give it that. And as for the first point, stating that Cydia Substrate currently isn't patched for iOS 10.x, yeah, it's definitely not, but that's not really too big of a problem. In years past, almost every single new jailbreak that's been released, Cydia Substrate was then updated after the jailbreak was released to again include support for the current jailbreakable firmware at that time time. So in other words, it doesn't matter. Jailbreak developers just release their jailbreak tools anyway, and Sorik updates after a new jailbreak has already been released to the public. Now there have been occasions when Sorik has worked with jailbreak developers to kind of better time releases, specifically with Pangu. But if this guy is just a single developer, chances are good he doesn't have the hookup with Sorik. And again, he is not verified, he's not trusted, and we don't know whether he can actually deliver something but it seems like this guy just doesn't really want to. After all, he did state that he recorded that video on the 24th of October and he didn't release it until today, November 4th, simply because he wasn't sure of the reaction that he'd receive. But it looks like that that's the extent of it and that we won't actually see anything from it. Here's where the possible good news could come into play. Again, provided this thing is legitimate, he could pass what he's been working on thus far on to Pangu and they could improve implement it into a new jailbreak. Who knows, this could drastically expedite the potential release of an iOS 10.1.x jailbreak. How epic would that be? I mean, this has happened in the past, not only with hacker Luca Tedesco, but the latest instance being with Loki Heart for the iOS 9.1 jailbreak. Again, Loki Heart passed his primary kernel exploit onto Pangu, and they were able to update the iOS 9.0.x jailbreak to be able to function on iOS 9.1 thanks to his contribution. If this is real, then that same thing could potentially happen. Of course, I will keep you guys updated absolutely every step of the way. Be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name. And big shout out to Black Geek Tutorial. His channel is linked below. He helped with analysis. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I am here to definitely explain things to the best of my ability and to inform you of what's going on in the realm of jailbreaking. So let me know in the comment section if you appreciate that. And if you want to be informed even more frequently, just just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCracker iDevice community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.